today we are duping several high-end pieces of home decor and I also have a very special announcement. I've been working on a project for months now and I cannot wait to share it with you. We will get to that in a little bit, but let's jump right in with our first dupe. I was on the Etsy website and I saw this adorable clock. It was so whimsical and unique. I loved the chinoiserie birds. It comes in at a price of $78, which isn't outrageous, but I think that we can recreate one for less. So I headed to the thrift store in the hopes that I could find a similar clock and I found one. This clock is almost an identical replica and the price on mine was only $6.99. The orange stain on this clock needs to be changed. And then there's the hardware. There is a pull on the drawer that's copper and the handle on the top is a darker antique color. They do not match, so we are going to change those as well. First up, there is a latch that's on the side, so we are going to remove that so we can paint our clock. I got my drill and I took that latch right off. I began to remove the decorative pull off the drawer. It was nailed into the drawer, so I thought maybe I could just kind of shimmy it off, and I broke it. <laughs> I just, it snapped right in half. So at this point, all I could do was get my needle nose pliers and pull the rest of it off. Once I had the knobs off, I got a putty knife and I jammed it underneath the other part of the hardware and just pried it up. So out of necessity, we will eventually be getting a new knob for the drawer. I didn't know my own strength on this one. All right, so now that we have those parts taken care of, what we're gonna do is remove the clock mechanism from our clock. It had some spring hinges, so it just popped right out. Because I learned a very valuable lesson on the drawer pole, we are not gonna take anything else off. We are gonna leave the handle and the hinges on the clock so we are going to tape those off. So I just got some blue painter's tape and I taped off the hinges and the handle. I got some paper and I put it inside with a little drawer and then got some blue painter's tape and put it over the top because we wanna protect the velvet inside. Now everything's protected, it's time to paint it. Now you guys, <laughs> we are going out on a limb today. and We are painting this clock black, yes black it's not white it's not gold it's black we are going out of our comfort zone so i took my clock outside and i began to spray it in this black semi-gloss rust-oleum spray paint you guys the minute i started spraying this paint my stomach dropped i was like oh i hope i'm making the right decision but i had already started so i just jumped right in and sprayed the entire clock in this black spray paint I did the front of the drawer and all around the clock. I did the top, the sides, the bottom. Once it was completely covered in this black spray paint, I let it dry for an hour. Now that everything's dried, we can remove the blue painter's tape. So I just pulled that off of the hinges and the handle and the drawer. Now we're going to put some blue painter's tape back onto the clock. I put it around the hinges and the handle because what we're going to do is get some gold rub and buff and a rag and we're going to add this gold rub and buff to the metal hinges, handle, and hook. I rubbed this rub and buff on the hinges first. I made sure that they were fully covered in the rub and buff. Then I moved on to the handle. I got the base of the handle itself I made sure that all of it was covered. Once the handle was finished, I moved on to the latch and the screws that we had previously removed. I put the rub and buff all over the latch and the screws. And the nice thing about using the rub and buff is that it's more like a wax. So you don't have to wait more than five minutes to have it dry. So after that time was up, I could remove that blue painter's tape to reveal these beautiful gold metal hardware pieces. I like the way that these look now. Our metal pieces look antiqued and they match color-wise. Our inspiration clock had a beautiful chinoiserie bird design. Now, we are not gonna go that bright, but what we are gonna do is keep it classic. 
So I had this book of scrapbook paper that I purchased from Ross a while ago. Inside was this black and cream damask or damask, however you say it, print with a beautiful sheen on it. And these are the scrapbook pieces that we are going to use to cover our clock. I measured the front of my clock to get the correct size. Then I cut my paper to get the correct circle cut out. I placed the paper on the front of the clock, opened it up and traced the circle so I got an exact size. Then I cut out the circle from the paper. Once I was done, I put it back on the front of my clock and it was a perfect fit. Then I simply cut the scrapbook paper to fit on all the other surfaces on my clock. To adhere the scrapbook paper to my clock, I'm going to be using some Mod Podge and a sponge brush. I painted on the Mod Podge on the front of my clock. Then I took my decorative paper and put it in the Mod Podge. Then I got a scraper tool and I pressed the paper firmly to the wood to make sure that it laid flat. And also this will remove any air bubbles that might be trapped underneath the paper. Then I moved on to the drawer. I did the same thing. I got the Mod Podge, I painted it all over the drawer front, and then smoothed it out with my scraper. Next step is to do the sides, so I just repeated the same process. I got the Mod Podge and the sponge brush, and I painted it on the sides. I put the rectangular piece on the top first, and then moved down to the second rectangular piece on the bottom. Once those had been pressed firmly to the side, I flipped it to the other side and did the exact same thing over there. I added the Mod Podge first, I placed the paper into the Mod Podge, then pressed it firmly to the clock with the scraper. Now all of the decorative paper has been Mod Podged onto my clock. Once it was in place, I let it dry for one hour. Now it's time to paint on the top layer of Mod Podge. So I simply just got my sponge brush on the Mod Podge and I painted a liberal amount of this all over the surface of the clock. Now if I did get any Mod Podge on the clock itself, on the wood, not on the paper. I wiped that off. I wanted to keep the Mod Podge on the paper and not on the clock. Once I had this top layer of Mod Podge coated all over the surfaces of the paper, I let it dry for three hours. Now it's time to replace the broken pole. I had a leftover knob from a previous project a long time ago. It is the cutest little knob. It looks like a flower. It's gold and white, and I think it will look fantastic on this drawer front. So I got my drill again, and I drilled a hole right in the center of the drawer front. Then I took my knob and pressed it through the hole. On the back, I put a washer and a nut to hold it in place. Now we can reattach the latch on the side. I got my drill, and I just screwed that right back into place. The final step is to put the clock mechanism back into the clock. This is something that I probably should have tested out first. I don't even know if this works, so let's keep our fingers crossed that it does. I got my battery and I put it into the clock mechanism and thankfully it works, you guys. So not only did we get a great price on this clock, but it's a working clock, so that's a definite score. I just popped it right back into the front of my clock and it sprung into place. I am beyond thrilled with the way that this adorable clock turned out. We've definitely went out on a limb choosing a darker color palette, but I think the black coordinates so beautifully with our decorative paper. The gold hinges, the handle, and the latch add an elegant touch. And I think the new knob is a beautiful accent. Let's look back at our inspiration piece. This clock from Etsy cost $78. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my clock, the grand total was $12.99. What a fantastic price and a great savings over our inspiration piece. I love the way that my clock looks. It has an elegant feel and it's personalized to my taste. It's time for me to share with you what I have been working on for months. I have created a website that sells wall art prints. I absolutely love every single print that is on this website. It's lisaburningham.com. 
And I have curated a collection of prints that I would put in my own home. Every single one of them is classy, timeless, elegant, and would enhance the look and feel of any home. I have botanical prints, landscapes, clouds, contemporary pieces, and seasonal prints. Right now, there are over 150 for you to choose from. They are so high quality. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of them. So you can see how beautiful these prints are. They are high quality. I've been working with a graphic designer and we have come up with some fantastic pieces. Pieces that I know that you will absolutely love. They come in a variety of different sizes. You can select a smaller or a larger size. I also have horizontal and vertical options. All you need to do is select the size in the print that you want and it will be mailed directly to your home. And all you need to do is put it in a frame of your choice. Along with all of these gorgeous prints, I have a newsletter that you can sign up for. And then also there's a section that's a blog. So I'll be posting pictures of my home, some design tips, or just a special message from me to you. This is another way that I can communicate with all of you wonderful people and we can stay in touch and I can show you what I'm working on. So new prints, new art will be coming up all the time, especially as we have Christmas coming up. I've got such a great selection of art for you there. Right now I have an autumn collection that's highlighted. I've selected a whole bunch of autumn prints that you could have in your home to make your home feel like fall. I have this print right here that we are going to go give to a certain someone that I think a lot of you know and see what she thinks about these. If this house looks familiar and many of you know it because it is Natalie Callahan's from Design to the Nines, we are going to give her our print and I hope she likes it as much as I do. We've both been working on projects for a while now. I'm, I'm looking a little ragged today because I am renovating my library room, so forgive. <laughs> and this may be something that she puts in there, we'll see. Yeah. Who knows? Um, I'll find a good spot We'll find it. a good spot. Okay, well let's give it to her, shall we? Here you go. Oh my word. Isn't, Isn't that great? beautiful, you guys? This is one that she picked out. Definitely so... buy this. This is so beautiful. The colors and everything and the quality looks so nice. I love it. Thank you. And actually, I have something for Lisa too. Oh, she didn't great. know I was going to do this. I didn't. <laughs> How fun. We love prizes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so if any of you watched my thrifting oh, hacks video like a little while ago, I found this on a thrifting trip and I knew it would be perfect for Lisa. You guys know. If I you watch her white. channel, you'll understand. <laughs> this is so pretty. Thank you. Sure. The birds and the blue and white. Yeah, oh, this is it's so right up her alley. So. <laughs> Thanks, Bye, Natalie. Natalie. I have a coupon code for all of you guys. It will give you 10% off any print, any size, site-wide. The code is Lisa10, so make sure you use that code when you check out. I would love to get your feedback on the website. Your opinion is important to me. I appreciate all of you guys so much. So this is a special opportunity for me to share these beautiful prints with you. I hope you love them as much as I do. A way to immediately bring a touch of elegance into your home is with a gorgeous floral arrangement. And you've got to start off with a stunning container. I was browsing through the Horchow website and I saw this beautiful white basin container. It was a great size and I loved the gold accent on the bottom. Since we're on the Horchow website, you guys know it's going to be a little pricey. This container comes in at $485. We are going to do much better than that. A great place to find cheap pieces is at the clearance section. I always browse up and down the clearance aisle. You never know what you're going to find. I was at Home Goods and I went down this aisle and I found this wooden serving bowl. I love the shape of this bowl, the curved edges, and the size. The price was also fantastic at only $15. Okay, first things first, we're going back to my comfort zone of a white spray paint. So I took my bowl outside and I sprayed the underside of the bowl and the sides in the white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. 
I made sure that the bottom of the bowl and the edges were completely coated in the spray paint. Then I let it dry for one hour. After the hour was up, I flipped it over and I spray painted the inside of the bowl, the top edge, and the sides once again. Once these areas were completely covered in the spray paint, I let it dry for another hour. Our inspiration bowl had some teeny tiny little feet, so we need to come up with some feet for our bowl. I went to Hobby Lobby and I headed down the hardware aisle and I found some small gold round geometric looking knobs. These are the perfect shape and size and they were only $3.99 a piece. Luckily for us, this bowl is wooden, so I can drill some holes through the bottom. So I got my drill and I drilled three holes equidistant from each other on the bottom of the bowl. Then I took my knobs and I twisted them through the hole. Now I made this hole just the right size so that as I twist the knob through the hole, it was really tight. Once all the knobs had been twisted into the holes on the bottom of the bowl, I flipped it over and I added a washer and a nut to the top to make sure that everything stayed firmly in place. And that's it. We are done creating our dupe bowl. Look at how beautiful this bowl looks. I am in love with the shape of this bowl and the size. I love the way that it curves in and out. It's very shapely. The feet on the bottom add that sparkle and shine with the gold and the geometric pattern. This wooden bowl has been transformed into a timeless piece. Let's take a quick look back at our inspiration bowl. If you remember, it was $485. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my bowl, it was only $30, which is a great price. Now, if you look at the Horchow bowl, there is a flower arrangement that goes along with it. However, it's not included in the cost of the bowl. So what we're gonna do is make a flower arrangement. You can buy floral inserts and then put them in your own container. So that's what this is. It's a orchid flower insert and it's $166, which is quite expensive. So we're going to make our own. We're gonna start off with some floral foam. Now you guys, I am a reuser of floral foam. I don't think there is anything wrong with floral foam with a little bit of holes in it. It still works out fantastic. So we're gonna put some floral foam in the bottom of our container and yes, it has holes in it, but yes, it will still work. Next step is to take some moss and spread that over the surface of the floral foam. I attached it to the foam with some floral pins. Now it's time for our orchid stems. I purchased mine at Michael's. They were $5.99 a piece, but I had a 30% off all regular priced purchases, which brought the cost down. I took five of these stems and I poked them into the floral foam at various places. Then I bent the flowers at the top. I love doing this because Instead of having them go straight up, it adds a nice curve and it also makes the orchids look a little more natural. My orchid stems did not come with leaves, so we're gonna have to get a little creative and come up with an alternative. I think that magnolia leaves are similar to our orchid leaves in this instance, so I got a whole bunch of magnolia stems and I placed them at the base of the orchids. I had a whole bunch of these because I wanted to mimic our inspiration piece really well. I put them throughout the bottom of our arrangement. This orchid arrangement is just what this container needed to elevate it to the next level. It took this container and brought it into a more elegant, a more classic look. This arrangement is timeless. I can use it all year long. I can put it in various areas of my home I happen to be a lover of orchids, and so this arrangement is right up my alley. Our inspiration orchid insert was $166, and after calculating all the costs that went into my orchid arrangement, it was only $35. So we saved ourselves a whole lot of money by duping this ourselves. I love the classic lines, the elegant look, and the timeless feeling it adds to my home. 
I really enjoy using table runners. I use them all over my house. I think it warms up those tables and it also gives you a place to display some decor. So we are going to dupe this runner that I found on the Kirkland's website. This is a very simple but beautiful table runner. It costs $39.99. Again, that's not outrageous, but I know that we can make one for less. So I went to Ross and I found a table runner there. It was so pretty. I loved the cream color and the design on the front was so pretty. But when you flipped it over to the other side, it was plain. So I knew that this was going to be a perfect blank slate to create a runner. And it was a great price at only $8.99. All right, you guys, this is going to be one of the easiest dupes that we have ever done. What I'm gonna do is flip my runner over to the blank slide. I'm going to get some ribbon. This is a beautiful ribbon that has some lace detail on the outside. This is from Michaels. And the third thing that we're gonna need is some fabric glue. I took my ribbon and I put it at the end of the runner. I added fabric glue to the back and pressed it firmly to the table runner. I am going to be using a ruler to make sure that my ribbon stays in the center. We don't want it to get ski wampus as we go down the runner. But all I did was I just continued to add that fabric glue to the ribbon and press the ribbon onto the runner. I did this the entire length of the runner. Once I got to the end, I took some fabric scissors and I trimmed the ribbon and then I added the last bit of fabric glue to make sure that everything stayed in place and then I let it dry overnight. We are done with this dupe, you guys. How easy was that? But now we have a double-sided runner. So when I get sick of one side, I can flip it to the other. I can use the decorative side or the more simplistic side with one beautiful runner. I placed my runner in the center of my breakfast table and I love the way that it warms up this table. The velvet fabric and the lace ribbon add an elegant touch. I only needed three things to create the stoop. The runner, the ribbon, and the fabric glue. So as a grand total, my cost was $13, which is a great savings over our $39.99 Kirkland's runner. If you're looking for a super simple and affordable project, this runner is right up your alley. You can customize it to your own taste. You can choose a different ribbon. You could choose a different color runner. You could take this in any direction you wanted that would fit in with your design style. We did a whole bunch of dupes today, you guys. And I think that they all turned out so beautifully and we were able to save ourselves so much money by creating these ourselves. If you find a piece that's out of your budget, know that you can recreate it for less. Doing it yourself can help you to live beautifully on a budget. Now, don't forget to head on over to lisaburningham.com. Use coupon code LISA10 to get 10% off anything on my website. I'm so excited to share this with you, and I hope you like it as much as I do. I hope you got some inspiration today, too. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching.